everybody. It's Doc dropping in on you. Hope everybody's man had a good strong week. Look, I need to talk to you. Uh, but before I do, it's important that I remind you guys that we're in the middle of a fundraiser. Um, you know, it, 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 it comes to a point where it seems redundant, but it, it's necessary to do this. And I'm constantly reminded of my responsibility to do so. We do the work. So therefore, we've, asked, we've earned the right to ask. Nobody owes us anything, but we've earned the right to ask. Uh, 30 years in the game, thousands of hours of research, community engagement, program development, dealing with stuff um, in the legal field, uh, backing people up. So many different things we do, and we do it consistently. There's not a day that goes by that some kind of case, some type of situation doesn't land on my desk. We need your support. We need your help. Look in the description box and uh, determine which direction you want to give. There, there are several different ways that you can give, whichever way you're more comfortable with. Some people like cash up. Some people want a direct uh, processor. Uh, others want to do GoFundMe. We did it. We set it up all for you. It's up to you. Um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I'm disappointed in the level of support that uh, we get for the amount of work we do. Uh, but it does not in any way deter me from being who I was meant to be, designed to be, and have, and who I've committed to be in this fight. So I want to keep pressing on, but it will be great to have your support. With that being said, let's talk about just one of the reasons why I said this the other day, so I'm going to talk about it again because I think it's immensely important that we gain an understanding of this. One of the most important components of manhood is protection. Before you become a provider, before you develop the skill set and the mentality to go out and provide, you develop the physical capacity to defend and to protect. And that goes across the board. Uh, we have a situation where we don't only have, and this is huge, we don't only have um, a situation where we have a problem with our men harming our women. Um, and we talked about this. I've done work on this. That's a big part of what black men lead is about African-American adolescent and young adult male violence. It's huge. And we work on that. We deal with that. We have the solution. We don't have the resources. But that's that's one of the issues. And that's something that we have to focus on. That's something that we have to be more than just aware of. That's something that we have to literally uh, be proactive and engaging. But there's another thing, and I talked about this the other day. And that is the fact that we have 75,000 missing and 75,000 black women missing and unaccounted for. That's 75,000 that are gone. And I'm going to tell you what the problem is. The first and foremost is that they're gone, but the second part is what little is being done about it. Let Becky go missing and they turn the fucking world upside down to find Becky. Whether they find her alive, whether they find her, they go, and they will go years, case will go cold, and they will still be out there grinding for Becky. They'll have all kind of different types of uh, uh, things set up for, for searches, and th they'll spend thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in the police investigation to find Becky. And when one of ours go missing, you know, we got social media and there's a small thing. We don't we don't get the media coverage. And I, I don't want this to be an attack on law enforcement because I know some law enforcement officers who go to the mat to solve murders in the black community. I know some law enforcement officers who do go. But where I can say that there's an absolute distinction is in the media. And while we can sit up and we can whine and complain about the media, we have alt black media, we have new black media, we have media outlets. What we don't have is resources. What we don't have is um, 
people getting behind what we do enough to grow it so that we create our own mechanism so that we can rival some of these platforms where they're getting all this exposure, where they're fighting these wars, where they are actually gaining ground and whatever. Why do you think the LBGTQ community is moving so much? Because they have the right type of structure and they have the resources. This isn't just somebody yelling with picking signs. That was this is an organizational push with a very strong agenda and protocols and strategies in place over a 50 year period. I see I saw it when I was young. I saw it start. I heard people talk about it. I didn't believe it would happen because at that time I was young, but I'm watching it happen now and they're not stopping. And then there are other groups using the progression of the LGBT community to push even more perverted ideas like ped pedophilia and ephebophilia. And that's happening while the real true authentic need for blacks to be protected, for blacks to have equal ground and footing and access uh, we're, we're losing ground because number one we're expecting those who benefit from our oppression and for our our uh, poverty from our miseducation from our incarceration from our gentrification we expect those people to actually solve our problems for us we expect those people to actually care that we have 75,000 black women missing in this country it's our responsibility to care it's our responsibility to first and foremost sit up and say we've got to do something about intimate partner homicide intimate partner violence where it's the second leading cause of death for black females between the age of 15 and 44. We need to deal with that, first of all. That needs to be an in-house thing that we deal with. There has to be, I've been preaching this for so long. I've put the solutions down. I'm telling you what needs to be done. Everybody's sitting up and it's casual until it lands on your doorstep. And it's starting to land on more and more doorsteps because everybody is okay until it happens to them. We don't have the connectivity. We don't have the ability to associate and empathize. We're so individual minded that all we care about what's happening in our small little worlds, not realizing that they're all connected. And they, they, they push that individualized mindset. Why? Because as long as they can keep us divided, we are, no, we are not a threat to the status quo. We're not a threat to the power structure. It's only when we start to unify, when we start to build, when we start to grow, when we're no longer easily manipulated, easy control, easily oppressed, easily misled, that we become a problem. It's our responsibility to put ourselves in that position. Second of all, we can't sit up and think it's okay that our women are going missing. We can't think it's okay that nothing's really being said about it. We should be screaming from the rooftop, not so much for white America to hear us, but for us to rally around what's going on. We're going to also have to be keenly aware of the dangers that are out there. Sex trafficking, human trafficking, uh, organ harvesting, those are real live issues that nobody wants to talk about. Everybody wants to hide in this little cocoon and believe that this world is so safe and that America is the safest and, 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 and most wonderful place on the planet to live. There are some places that, you know, there are some things about living in America that, you know, you won't get in other places. There are a bunch of things you can get. But with that being said, there are a lot of dangers, especially for black people, black boys, black men and our women and look our women are most likely to suffer from depression least likely to get help that's a problem i can't stress that enough so what do we do we are going to have to take action we are going to have to put our hands together we're going to come together i've been asking you guys to get behind it Look at the stuff that I've put together over the last 25 years. The Blueprint for Black Empowerment, the Black Code of Conduct, the Protocols, Black Men Lead, uh, the Programs for Mental Health. All of this stuff is power because it helps us heal. It helps us grow. It helps us come together. It gets rid of all of the things that are messing with us. This this co collective cognitive bias that we have that makes us work against one another. It literally addresses that. This isn't something 
that just will go by the wayside. It's getting worse. We're not improving. The racial gap is widening. Access is widening. We are being replaced in the area of political significance by Hispanics that are coming from south of the border. So as our relevance in the political world lessens, and the only reason that we've been relevant is because 90% of us vote Democrats. So Democrats have made us and kept us relevant. We are not even the largest minority anymore. So that means that we have to develop political clout. Why do you think Asians who make up such a small portion of this um, population have so much pull? You go to cities, they got entire blocks that's theirs. That's a place in Houston where there are at least, what, 50, 60 square blocks where the street signs are in uh, Korean and Vietnamese. It, you you don't read it all well. It it, it it it's there's they set it up why and and, and this isn't the most wealthiest of Asia. We we're not talking Japanese and China. We're talking about Koreans, Vietnam and, and Vietnamese, um, you know, all the way down to Malaysian and Laos, Laos, uh, Laosians. They 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 are making way. Why? Because Asians are have have the fastest growing earning potential. They are number one in the world in earning median, income median. Asians are actually past white and they are second right now in the way of wealth. Whites and then Asians and they're closing the gap. And, and because of that, they represent a power block. They represent a power structure. They have the ability to impact the economy at a greater uh, level than blacks who outnumber them significantly at this particular point. We are going to have to learn how to pull together. We're going to have to learn how to operate. It is really that simple. But obviously, it's not that easy for us. So that's my thing, man. Our women are dying and missing because we're not handling our business. That bothers me. As I said in the beginning of this, we really, truly need your support. Look in the description box and give. We need you to give. And I'm, I'm going to continue to stress that because it's going to continue to be a need. Um, I, give, I give this world and this life and everything I do, everything I have. So when I ask, I'm asking with a clear conscience because I've gone to the mat for so many of my people with nothing to gain and a lot to lose. I've taken shots. <laughs> I mean, major hits defending people who could not do anything but say thank you and so when I tell you I need help I'm telling you because at some point it's got to stop just being me and the few other people who are out there the grassroots people are getting suffocated by the nonprofit industrial complex people who are pulling in the money but doing jack shit with it if the money was being used right, a fraction of what they are pulling in could change the lives of black people across this across this uh, country. So they pull it in and they divert it. That's how Black Lives Matter was. Probably the most major diversion and misappropriation of funds that you can imagine when it comes to the black struggle. And most of us co-signed it for the longest. Some are still co-signing and yet the people who were boots on the ground doing something caught all kind of flack and didn't get didn't get nearly the support. So yes, I'm 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 calling it out. I'm saying what it is. We talk a good game. We are pro 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 pumping fist and at the at the core of it, we are falling right in line with what they want us to do and that's sit up and talk and do nothing time is up look i'm about to get out of here running here to the store and try to get to the house and close out my day but i had to talk to you about this i had to keep it real um you know and the thing is with me the wonderful thing i love about being me is i'm not here for likes i'm not here for shares i'm not here to be popular so when it's time to tell the truth i have no problem telling the truth i don't have no problem losing subscribers i don't have no problem with people being pissed off with me what i do have a problem with is my people suffering my uh, black women missing, black men going to prison for nothing, black boys killing each other, killing killing black females, and all this stuff is actually fixable. That's the crazy thing. 
it's fixable, it's doable. They're not gonna do it. They are not gonna do it. So what are we gonna do? Everybody always, and please don't tell me to go talk to nobody else and have I done it. Either you wanna support or you don't. Because I've been up and down and in and out. And look, what one thing that I don't do to people. If somebody comes for me to help, I don't send them to someone else. Even if I think somebody can help them better, I'm going to help them. Then I'm going over there with them. And I'm going to say, hey, look, this is what I was able to do. What can you do? We've got to stop passing the buck. Enough is enough. I, that's all I'm saying. Like I said, you know, I can actually, I'll be honest with you. Where I'm at right now, I can actually sit up and everybody can get pissed off me. Everybody can leave the page and I will still be okay and I'll still do what I do. I'm not going to sit up here because it's not about popularity to me. So I'm not going to sit up here and worry about who's upset who. Because upset or not, nothing's happening. So you being okay with me because I'm laid back and I'm not calling out, calling out the shit that I'm saying doesn't change anything. I'm here to make changes. I'm here to do something. So if you're pissed, you're pissed. If you love me, you love me. If you hate me, you hate me. It's all good. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the truth. On that note, look, I'm out of here. Um, you know, for those who appreciate the work I do, thank you. Um, hopefully you get it. Hopefully we're going to do something about it. This is big. But on that note, look, I'm out of here. You can go to the description box. You can look at the top of the description box and you can choose how you want to help. On that note. Yeah. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here Dropping in with a little special announcement For those who have followed me for any stretch of time You know outside of the businesses that I run Like Myriad Business Solutions The Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, In Houston, Dallas and other areas uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. I'm free to be free.